Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Aros Fugad, and today we're going to be taking a look at coffee, the dark brain juice that fuels us all. Well, at least most of us. Now, if you think brewing a good flavorful cup of coffee is tedious and painstaking, it really isn't. It's actually almost as easy, if not even easier, than making chai. So, let's go. Let's get that apron on and let's get our caffeine fix. First, we're going to take a jab at the most simple and let's be honest, one of the most common kinds of coffee consumed in India, instant coffee. Now, it's not the most elegant of ways to drink real coffee, but it's what most of us grew up on. So, we're going to add about a teaspoon of instant coffee powder and a teaspoon of sugar to our cup, followed by some hot water. Stir to combine and dissolve the sugar. And there you have it, a quite literal cup of instant coffee. And it tastes, well, just like it sounds. I mean, it's not terrible, but it really doesn't have any depth or flavor profile other than just bitter and a generic coffee flavor and just plain boring. But if we added some dairy, maybe it would make things more interesting. To do this, we're gonna make about 100 ml of instant coffee. And of course, you can just pour some milk over it. But since this is a cooking show, we're gonna foam some steaming hot milk using a frother. Or if you don't have one of these, just pour the milk into a shaker or a bottle, screw on the lid and get shaking. But be very careful because shaking hot liquids in sealed containers can very often lead to injuries. Then once you have those creamy micro bubbles, go ahead and tilt your cup as you slowly pour in the frothy milk, topping it with a thick layer of foam. And while it does look better, there's really no significant improvement in flavor apart from the milkiness. Now for a real, well-balanced, soul-awakening cup of coffee, we're gonna have to brew it. And no, it doesn't always require super expensive brewing equipment, but it's actually pretty simple. And all you really need is a strainer or a chutney that you can easily find in your kitchen, especially if you're an Indian. Let's start with our coffee. In a perfect world, you would usually use freshly ground coffee, but I don't happen to have a coffee grinder, so I just ordered it pre-ground. There are a lot of artisanal coffee brands out there, that offer fresh ground coffee beans in a variety of grinds. We're gonna start with a nice light blend from Blue Tokai called Sitar Gundu Estate, which has notes of black tea, raisin, and hazelnut. We're gonna be using a chunni or a French press grind, which is a bit coarse like sea salt. Oh, and you will need a measuring scale because it's better to measure by weight than by quantity. We're going to measure and add 25 grams of coffee for 300 grams of water which brings it to a 1 is to 12 ratio, which is typical for this method. Then gently pour in 300 grams of hot water, which is a few seconds of the boil. Ideally, it should be between 90 to 96 degrees Celsius. Set a timer and let it steep for exactly 4 minutes. After which you're ready to pour yourself a cup of coffee that is crisp, bright and so good it's gonna make you wanna dance. Wait, what? Hey, that's my coffee. Ugh. Don't worry, we can just make ourselves another cup, maybe even jazz it up a bit, and attempt to make a caramel macchiato, for which we first have to make the caramel sauce. We're gonna add a cup of granulated sugar to a sauce pot, along with a quarter cup of water. Bring it to a boil and let it simmer until the sugar has melted and turns golden amber in color, at which point we're gonna add a cup of fresh or heavy cream. Be careful because it's going to bubble up pretty crazy and whisk it constantly until combined. Turn off the heat and add half a teaspoon of vanilla essence and three to four pinches of salt and stir again. Now technically a macchiato is made with espresso, but we don't have an espresso machine, but we do have some freshly brewed coffee. This time we're gonna go with a medium blend, which is quite playfully called a birthday blend with notes of dark chocolate, blueberries and roasted hazelnut. Same as before, 1 is to 12 ratio of water to coffee and 4 minutes of brew time. Now to build our caramel macchiato, we're gonna add a tablespoon of our caramel sauce followed by 100 ml of our freshly brewed birthday blend and stir to combine. We're gonna foam about 100 ml of steaming hot milk and pour it into our tilted cup, topping with a thick layer of foam. We're gonna drizzle some more caramel sauce over the top and try and fail miserably at some latte art. And yet, crappy latte art aside, this is really, really good. 
And yep, it does make me want to dance. Wait, where did it go? Ah, uh, whatever. Now, what if we wanted to level up and make ourselves an artisanal, full-bodied cup of coffee with an insane flavor profile? For that, we're gonna have to take a look at the pour-over method, for which we're gonna need this, a V60 pour-over, which is super inexpensive and cost me a little over 400 bucks on Amazon. Now, this method is slightly more demanding and exciting. First, we're gonna place the V60 over our coffee pot and place a coffee filter over it. We're gonna pour some hot water over it to A, wet the filter, and B, warm up the pot a bit. Then we're gonna dump out the water, and this time we're gonna use a medium dark blend in a much finer grind called something that I will never be able to pronounce, but it has notes of dark chocolate, toffee, and roasted almonds. We're gonna do a 1 to 16 ratio for this method. So we're gonna measure and add 12.5 grams of coffee for 200 grams of water and gently pour 50 grams of hot water all around the edges. Again, the water should be a few seconds off the boil or between 90 to 96 degrees Celsius. Set a timer for 30 seconds after which we're gonna pour 50 grams more of hot water around the edges. Try to get all the coffee grounds towards the center. Set another timer for 60 seconds and pour in the remaining 100 grams of hot water and let it drip out. And now let's see what this baby tastes like. And oh man, it really does blow your socks off. It's so smooth and rich and dark and actually kind of sweet and perfect. And I think this would be perfect for a lovely cup of mocha for which we're first gonna make a really simple chocolate sauce. We're gonna add half a cup of cocoa powder and half a cup of granulated sugar to a sauce pot and whisk until there are no lumps. Next, we're gonna add half a cup of water and a quarter of a cup of fresh or heavy cream and a pinch of salt. Whisk everything together, turn on the heat, bring it to a boil and simmer until the sugar has melted and the sauce has thickened. Turn off the heat, add half a teaspoon of vanilla essence and stir to combine. And now once that's ready, we're gonna add a tablespoon of our chocolate sauce into our cup, followed by 100 ml of our freshly brewed coffee and stir to combine. Next, we're gonna foam and add 100 ml of hot milk, followed by a drizzle of our chocolate sauce. And again, fail miserably at latte art, but don't worry, we're gonna go over the top and cover it with some whipped cream, another drizzle of chocolate sauce, maybe a chocolate wafer roll, and of course, we're gonna need a straw for this. And now let's dig in. Mmm, wow, just amazing. I definitely need more of this in my life. Wait, what? Well, god damn it, it's gone again. So I guess what you can take away from this is that you can never really have a good cup of coffee. Even if you brew it yourself. I'm just kidding, of course you can. Just make sure you make two cups instead of one.